Good morning, folks. Uh, we want to welcome you to Now You Know. And uh, my name is uh, Chris Perkins. And uh, we have, as our guest this morning, we have John Cannon, who is sales manager for Cousineau Products. So we're standing outside of Cousineau Products. And believe it or not, uh, this is November 10th and it's going to be 70 degrees today so we just kind of lucked right. out with the weather this is pretty darn good so anyways welcome to the show and john um you are the sales manager here yep. uh, and you've been in several capacities i guess in your years with uh Cousineau. you want to tell us a little bit about yeah, it? yeah i started in uh, 2010 with the company and in, in our laminate production line um, mostly dyeing and drying veneer to make our two laminate products, Spectrafly and Dymalux, and uh, uh, learned how to process those and that full operation, and uh, then began moving to a sales role and a customer service role, and uh, have been, been trying to push as much of it out as we can since uh, the last 10 years. Well, tell us a little bit about Kuzno itself. I mean, you know, this has been a family business that, if I read correctly, started somewhere around 1959 uh, with the parents, uh, and then um, and then Randy Kuzno uh, took it over, and now he's got his um, kids involved. Yes. in the process now so you want to tell us a little bit about that and how that works yeah randy cousineau is is now he's current president of the company of cousineau inc um, we are a uh, branch of that cousineau wood products in north anson here um, like i said pushing out mostly mostly laminated hardwoods um, and raw materials um, they do have other fractions of the company where uh, they are, are selling um, bark mulch uh, forest products um, uh, playground ships, sawdust, um, biodiesel fuel, um, a lot of different different things going on. Uh, but out of here, it's like I said, it's primarily um, laminated raw materials, uh, OEM components, and uh, you know, private label items for companies. And here is actually on the Valley Road in North Anson, uh, but the other locations. Uh, are over in East Wilton, right? Yes. And uh, Henniker, New Hampshire, which honestly I don't know where Henniker is, but uh, yeah, Southern New Hampshire. Um, yeah. It's, they've got a Henniker yard. Uh, it's mostly just a brokerage yard for, um, for the forestry good side of it, um, and corporate offices in, in Wilton. Yeah. Yep. And so you've expanded. I mean, you know, this this facility you're here at that in North Anson is really huge there's a lot of buildings here yeah 62 acres yeah 62 acres and this uh for those of you who go back a little ways this was originally north anson real for many years and then this sonico was it for sonoco yeah sonoco for a, for a few years yep and then now you guys since what 2000 yeah since 2000 they built the sawmill and they were uh this is before my time with the company. They were running about 50,000 board feet a day of hardwood out of that sawmill. And uh, 2007, 2008, with the housing crisis, they shut it down when it became just uh, impossible to earn a profit with it. So yep. um, the sawmill has since been uh, cleared out and auctioned off, and the plan for that building is to eventually put a veneer lathe and dryers in there to uh, peel our own birch veneers for some of our products. Now, uh, so veneer wood is what you're doing right now. Mostly. Yeah, explain what veneer is. For well, the, veneer for the is novice. a very thin layer of wood, um, about a sixteenth of an inch thick, uh, various lengths and, and widths, and we will take that and we will essentially glue it up into a plywood. Yeah. Um, you know, we will layer that up, stack it to required thickness and colors, and, uh, and, and turn it into something that's going to be consistent in color and durable out in the elements. So what do you use that veneer wood on? Uh, mostly, uh, that most of that output is right now is going to the outdoor market, uh, rifle stocks, uh, handgun grips, knife handles, um, game calls, archery components. Um, it's you know it's a it's a durable, waterproof, heat resistant, dent resistant uh, material 
that looks like wood. It is wood. It's a, okay. It's a wood-based composite. Um, so you get all the uh, features and characteristics that you want with wood, but don't have to worry about the durability of it so much. Now I understand you can do like multiple colors. Uh, yeah. With this, right. Any uh, of them to kind of adapt to what your your customer wants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We can make it look like a natural oak or walnut species, or get uh, real creative and you know multicolored pink, lime green, blues, whatever. Oh Whatever how, palette you're looking for. How do you add the color? Uh, we suck it in with a vacuum <laughs> for uh, a crude explanation of it. We, uh, we'll throw it in an autoclave and, and inject the dye in with the wood and put a, pull it under a vacuum pressure that will pull the, the color right through the cell structure of the wood. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So we're going to have a chance maybe to see that perhaps. Yeah, today and, yeah, and definitely. Take a look at that. So veneer wood is really the big thing that you're doing here at Kuzno Wood Products and Anson, right? Yes, I'd say it's about 60% what we're doing. We still do a lot of natural wood components, uh, birch, uh, maple, walnut. Yeah. But uh, most of it is, uh, is made out of land. Now you're not, are you doing... Uh, all the things like the landscaping stuff, the bark mulch, uh, the wood chips, things like that, are they all being done over in, in East Wilton? Is that where it is? Most of the business is done, that business is done out of there. Yeah. Um, we are uh, a storage yard for a lot of it. Uh, yeah. But uh, it's mostly run out of there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So we're going to, in a few minutes, we're going to end up going inside uh, the facility. And you've got a pretty large manufacturing building, don't you? Yes, it's uh, all together we've got over 200,000 feet of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And with uh, room to grow. Yeah. Well, we're going to have a chance in a minute to go inside and, and, and see that. Uh, we also have somebody else in the background here, right? Is this? Yes. Yeah. Brody. Do we want to bring Brody on right now? Might as well. Morning, Brody. Morning, how are you doing? Good, good. I'm uh, Chris Perkins, and now you know. Welcome aboard. And Brody, you're like the third generation. I am. Yep. Yep. And you run this mill. I do. Yeah. Yes. I run this facility. Uh, we bought uh, bought this facility in 2001. Okay. And uh, built a new sawmill here, and since then diversified into a lot of different avenues. Yeah, yeah. And we were talking uh, with John about the veneer products and and in a minute I think we're going to go inside and take Perfect. a look at that and and kind of walk people through the process here and I think that great. will be more interesting than any outside conversation we're no doing doubt about the specs and I have a yes. chance to get to really see that so uh, and how long have you been involved with the business uh, pretty much all my life <laughs> yeah um, I grew up uh, right across the street from Sawmill and Strong and okay. was, was been around it all my life that's right it started as a sawmill it started with your Grandfather. grandfather, yes, that's right. And then your dad kind of took things over, he and did. then expanded it greatly. Yeah, he's done after that. that. He's expanded into a lot of other areas besides the wood products industry, and uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, commercial and residential um, properties that he leases. And um, that's what I understand. He owns acres and acres in, in Franklin and Somerset County, right? And and uh, John was telling me before we went on the air that they've got um, got a lot of land up in the in the Saddleback Rangeley area. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. About and ten thousand acres there, and another fifteen hundred or so in Phillips, and, and a bunch of smaller parcels. Yeah, yeah. So, is there another generation after you coming on? Or is I've got, I have five kids, so oh my, my sister has three. So we've got. Uh, oh, you got. And then my brother has uh, three children as well. So we've got, oh, this, we've got plenty. Is, this is going to go on for a long time then it looks like to me. Let's hope. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think now we want to go inside and, and why don't uh, you folks walk us around and show us the process. Sounds good. Okay. Okay folks, we are now inside the mill and, and John is going to give us a tour around and and John, we're all about safety on this program. We got the mask and then we got the safety glasses and other than I can't see a darn thing with them on, they're yep. okay. They're fogging up. They're fogging up. So yes. uh, 
but it's something we have to do and and so forth so yep. you want to kind of take us by some of the equipment and the production sure. line and and tell us what you're doing sure and in regards to that safety aspect we don't we don't ask our uh, equipment operators to wear the mask if their goggles are going to fog up. Okay. They'll maintain distancing, but they have to be able to see running machinery. So. Uh, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. I think I, I think I might take my chance of the pandemic rather than having somebody driving uh, yeah. a truck and not being able to see. Absolutely. All well, right. Speaking of that, here we go. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's walk around. Good. We'll start right over here with the Gunstop Blank production. So okay, for, this is for gun stocks? Yes, for our natural wood gun stocks, either out of birch, maple, or walnut. We'll bring in dried lumber, either two inch or two and a quarter inch thickness. And we will uh, bring it over here for our first step after inspection off the truck. Our first step will be to mark the stocks over here on this department. Hey there. So, so what he just did, this is the shape of a shotgun buttstock. And he's just marking the template out so the band sawyers can cut those pieces out. Like it. He'll mark roughly 1,200 pieces a day. So the next step, you've got your marked pieces, they're going to go up to the bandsaw and the operator is going to cut out each template here. those pieces are cut out you're throwing them up on a belt and that belt's going to carry them to the next operation So off that belt onto this round table, you've got your bandsawed pieces and they need to be planed to thickness. So from that step, it'll go through the planer, which isn't running right now, but. When 
they do come out the outfeed of that planer. You've got your finished defect free blank right there, ready for the manufacturer to throw in their machines and carve a buttstock. John, what, what type of wood is that? You may have said it, but I probably didn't hear it. Yep, that is birch. We okay. provide birch, maple, and walnut. Okay. Now, yep. who are some of your customers for this? Right now? Uh, for firearm manufacturers, uh, we've, we've been with Remington, Mossberg, Ruger. Um, yeah, though we've been with them for a long time, and a lot of smaller guys too. Um, you know, not not smaller guys, but uh, lesser known companies all around the world. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Now you're the you're the sales manager, so you're involved in negotiating this stuff and oh yeah, and making sure those sales happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta How is that we gotta keep them pandemic, coming in. John? Um, it's it's been. The sales have been there. Yeah. It was tough in uh, in the procurement aspect of things to get to get going at the, at the beginning of all this, and it's still a little up and down here and there. But uh, uh, we're we're getting things out the door. Where, yeah. are you, where are you getting this wood from? This wood here is coming from all over New England. The walnut comes from the Midwest, Missouri, okay. mostly, um, and our uh, all of our veneer is uh, sourced uh, out of uh, Wisconsin. So are you involved in the procurement side as well as the selling side? Not or? so much. I try to uh, um, I try to just uh, leave that up to purchasing okay. and, and, and production. Uh, but uh, every now and then, if we need, I'll throw my hand in there and give them a hand. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And you were, you were telling me right now you've got, what, roughly about 50 people working yeah. Here in, in uh, Anthem. Yep. And overall, what did you say, about 150 people total among the divisions? Company wide with Cousin Inc., yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And those numbers obviously float up and down. They do go up and down. Um, you know, uh, like I said, one of our, 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 our bread and butter is the firearm industry, which is pretty volatile. I mean, depending on election year, uh, you know, current events. It, it's it's up and down so we will you know i wish things were a little more steady um but we'll uh we kind of go with the flow and, and hire more people yeah. hopefully as, yeah. as we as they're needed um so like a lot of things politics plays a role in, yes. in gun sales right yes we knew it was going to be a big year for election year uh, but uh, we didn't plan on a pandemic also boosting um that demand yeah. um so, so but, as, uh, as we're recording this show, uh, Joe Biden is the president-elect, I yeah. guess, and not all the Republicans are accepting that, but he's the president-elect. What impact would having a, him and a Democrat have on gun sales? Is there, is there a worry that more gun control and people um, need to buy guns now? I think overall that, you know, it, Generally speaking, it'll boost things for, for, for business in the gun industry um, because people do worry about that um, than being taken away or, or, or more restrictions. But it won't affect us as much because I think most of those guns are going to be handguns and ARs and okay. plastic uh, component guns. Okay. We're more of the bolt action hunting rifles, the, the shotguns. Um, and hunting is up, so that's we're, that's also where we're seeing an increase of demand. Um, a pandemic, it's one way to get outside. Absolutely, all sporting goods are up. You know, we make a lot of comp components for um, for skateboards, for fishing rods, and yeah, anything people are doing outside. You know, that those products are, are selling pretty good. Okay. Well, it sounds as though this pandemic's going to be with us for a while longer. So yeah, hopefully, and, and gone soon. Are, and me included are looking for ways to get outside and, yeah. and uh, do stuff outside. So. Right. And hopefully that sticks around. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Well, where do we want to go from here, John? Oh, seeing the natural wood side of things, let's go over to our laminate line. Sounds good. All right. Okay, we're standing in front of uh, drumsticks, right? Or what's going to become drumsticks. Right. This is and a blank. Here we go. Uh, it, this is uh, one of our uh, laminate lines called Stapac. 
and it's a resin infused laminate that we can control the weight and the density of very easily and uh, that's why the drumstick drumstick manufacturers like it because they want two drumsticks to be identical weights and oh, sound the same of course so these will be going off to Vic Firth actually up in Newport yes and for one of their items yeah and that is that's what they do is drumsticks that's all they that's do is all percussion do. yep yep so you go from uh, guns to drumsticks musical instruments yep yes we do a lot of guitar bodies too yeah guitars skateboards you guys are very diversified that probably is helpful with an economy that's kind of going up and down. yes i try to try to diversify as much as we can we've even made toothbrushes mm -hmm. toothbrushes yes. okay wow yep. you do what you have to do to make it. yes whatever the customer wants okay and what uh is this what's right behind is this more drumsticks? Or? Nope, this is uh, material for knife handles. Knife handles? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Like steak knives? Uh, yeah, for uh, kitchen cutlery. Kitchen cutlery. Yeah, okay. a company in Ohio. Okay, that company is Warther? Warther Cutlery. Okay. Yeah. Familiar with that. Brand new customer and uh, they've been great to work with. So how do you, you know, your sales, how, uh, how do you find the customers, John? <laughs> I mean, a lot of times they find me. We're, we're lucky that we've got kind of a niche product that not really anybody that I know of in the country is making. And yeah. uh, I know there's a couple of uh, Asian manufacturers making it, but uh, you know, a lot of times they'll reach out to us for, for having that durable, for, for having the need for a durable um, wood composite. Okay. Um, so I spend a lot of time, you know, uh -uh receiving the inquiries other than cold calling okay um, i do reach out or i have some of our customer service associates reach out to you know literally anybody making stuff with wood you know have you tried this product before and yeah. i'll send them some free samples and usually they're hooked it's so different it's uh you know, because you've been doing this quite a while, I'm sure you get a number of referrals too oh yeah 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 we we've, we've and we're up to a uh customer base of about 5,000 right now. Okay, and, and are they all over the country? All over the world, world. yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, we ship a lot to a lot to Europe, a lot to uh, Australia, Japan, yeah, mostly the States and Canada, but, yeah. but globally. How involved is the shipping process, particularly globally? Who do you, who do you use to do the shipping? Uh, we use UPS for most parcel shipments um, okay. and uh, FedEx freight for our LTL shipments um, okay. you know we'll sh in, or, or or other ways if we're shipping containers overseas but okay. uh, it is not cheap to ship you know one piece of wood to, to the United Kingdom it's uh, I'm working on right now getting a reseller over there set up so that we can ship larger volumes and yeah. and hopefully cut down on price because there's a huge demand for it over there um, yeah. So that's the next venture. Trying to, trying to do that. Trying now, to push it you, to the Europe. Some of these folks obviously are speaking a different language than you. How, do, how does that go? Uh, well, when I went to Japan a couple years ago, we had a translator. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, I don't get a lot of inquiries uh, in, in another language other than English. Okay. Um, we don't have a lot of experience with it, but okay. we work with what we can. Well, I guess English is today kind of a universal language. Yeah, and translators, email translators, will, you know, it's it's a little scratchy, but it'll work. You know, and we can figure out what each other want there. So, how much traveling do you do, John? This year, none. <laughs> oh yeah, well, I got that. I usually In normal um, year. Normal year, I'm you know I'm flying once a month. You know. Um, somewhere visiting a customer. We don't have a lot of Maine or, or New England customers that are a drive away. Everybody's a good distance. Um, but I like to get out and see them. And yeah. uh, I, so I would usually, like I said, I'd be on a plane once a month in their, all their factories, seeing what they need, how things are going, and uh, hopefully we can get back to that someday. Customers, you got them around the world. How about like within 100 miles? Uh, within 100 miles, we've got a few. We've got, uh, as I mentioned, Vic Firth and Newport. Uh, they're one of the biggest, have been with us for five or six years and great customer. 
Uh, we've also started recently doing a lot of items for uh, Origin out of Farmington. Okay. Um, mostly exercise equipment components, and uh, yeah, they've been a great, great tell, partner tell to have. Tell me about Origin. I don't really know about, even though they're local. Yeah, Origin's a great company. They're in Farmington, Maine, uh, and they're they're expanding rapidly every day. It seems um, they 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 originally started with the jujitsu gi lines. Uh, okay. martial arts gear oh i see yeah and <clears throat> since then they've expanded into uh, all types of apparel you know jeans shirts uh, leather goods boots wallets um, and most recently they've developed uh, some an, an exercise equipment line okay so they're making kettlebells um, war clubs um, and things of that nature and uh, and it keeps growing and, and we keep helping them make the uh, parts they need to make them. Now, how big a company is that? And I, and I know they're in Farmington, but where, where are they located? Uh, they are located right in downtown Farmington is their, their headquarters. Oh, really? Yeah, and I believe they're at around 100 employees. Gotta probably drive right by now. and didn't even know I... Probably, then they're doing, you know, now they're getting into, or not now, they've been into um, the energy drink uh, market for a few months now at least and I believe on um, what was that day um, on Prime Day the yep. Amazon Prime Day yeah they were the number one selling energy drink on Amazon oh no kidding yeah yeah so wow. they're they're busy wow interesting to learn about that I didn't know anything about it so. yeah I check them out they're yeah. um, well, Great now company. we're going to move on and uh, take a look at some of the other product lines. All right. Hey. Okay, what do we have here? So this is an example of an individual veneer sheet. This is just a layer of birch that's going to go into our Spectraply, Dymalux, and other laminate products. So the first thing we'll do after this comes off the truck and been inspected and uh, uh, cleared for defects is going to go over to the autoclave room and get some color to it. Okay. Good shot. That's already dyed veneer. I wish I had a basket of undyed veneer to show you the first step, but... So this is veneer that's already been dyed. And he's pulling it out right now to set aside to go through the dryer. What is that, like oil? Ah, uh, that's dye. That's a dye? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. He'll let it sit there for a second to drip off, and then pull it out and get it on a, on a pallet so we can bring it around for the dryer. So what? It almost looks like oil, but it's uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's get caked on there over the years. Oh, I see. Yeah. All right. From there, so, so these are all the different dye options that we have. Each toad is a different color. And then from there, it'll come over to the dryer. So this is wet veneer that's been saturated and completely in dye. Multiple colors. And the operator will feed this veneer through a 90 foot dryer to get it down to less than 5% moisture content. What, uh, what are these colors used for, John? 
you name it. They're yeah. uh, anything from rifle stocks to salt and pepper shakers. This reminds me of what uh, 1970s colors. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have right now about, I think, 16 standard options of individual colors, and then we make customs all the time as well. Okay. So we've got a lab where we can uh, formulate um, custom colors pretty quickly and, and match what the customer wants. So from here, we kind of got to go backwards, and we'll show you how they come out. Process. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty efficient. So they'll come out here, like I said, about three to five moisture content. The operator will count them up in stacks and pull out anything with a defect. And what do you do with the defect? Like a hole right there. We'll either cut them down um, and use them uh, in a smaller size or use them in another product that needs a lesser grade veneer. What's the thickness of that? John? Those are 1 16th of an inch. Okay. Yep. And so once those are dried, they'll go into our climate controlled room to keep them at a certain moisture content. So this kind of a stock room for for all of our veneer to keep it in that three to five moisture content range. Um, it's also a staging area for panels that we've already laid up for the press. Like this one here, you've got a, looks like an orange, green, black, and lime pattern. And these are all laid up in individual panels, Every ready to be pressed. Yeah. So I've seen the, like on your Facebook, some of the finish. So this will all be glued together yep. and then uh, turned. Yep. And Turn, so carve, whatever. Colors that come through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I first came here, I thought I, I saw a, a gun stock on the wall, and I thought it was painted. I could yeah. not wrap my head around how those colors were exposed from a block of wood, and yeah, then yeah. until you actually saw it machined, and and uh, you figure it out. <laughs> it's very interesting. I had no idea before coming to see you how you did this process. Yeah. As I say, you've got some very interesting colors here, John. I yeah. Yeah, these will all be um, game calls for a customer down in Mississippi. Okay. What's he going to like them to call with it? I'm trying to think of which call those go to. I believe that's a predator call. Predator call, yeah. Yeah. Oh, interesting. For uh, Primo's hunting. Okay, so they're used for that. Mm-hmm. And, uh... Would you use some of these like purple and and uh, you, as I said, you've got some unusual colors here. Yeah, they're yeah. There's no way to know which they're going to go towards. Uh, products made all over by all different people and, and uh, different companies and make different items. It's well, you're also you're going overseas on a number of these. Yeah, right? yeah. So One of our biggest. Yeah color schemes that they want might be a little different than what you'd see around here. Yeah, one of our uh, one of our biggest overseas customers makes um, hair clips like Barrett. Oh, style okay, things. all right, all right, got that. And they're yeah. very multicolored. They that love, would make sense. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I was just trying to figure out what these colors would be used for. Oh, you, you name it. That I can say on TV? Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, strangest thing. I think one of the most unique things I've been that we've had requested was the toothbrushes. Yeah. That's okay. uh, you know, a company contacted us and wanted to make 
um, you know, a wooden toothbrush, but they knew obviously in a bathroom setting, it's going to get wet, it's going to sit in water. You know, wood isn't going to work around that environment. No, no. But our product, Dymalux, will because you could leave it in a puddle of water for a month and you can take it out, it's going to look and feel just the same as when you put it in there. So Dymalux is your product, it's your product name. Yes, it's one, it's a, one of our laminates. Um, it's a resin infused birch that uh, when that resin gets in there, it, it makes it waterproof. It's basically a plastic added to the wood, so it makes it oh, a waterproof, um, thermally resistant uh, laminate that's also hard as a rock and extremely dense. Okay. Um, so it's, and it requires no finish to achieve yeah. those properties. Yeah. Um, it's right out of the box, raw material. It's, it's, uh, it's got that durability. So you've got to die for almost any occasion here. I'm looking at your color charts over on the wall here. And oh yeah. Uh, and I'll show you our stock room with all of our different uh, blanks available too. And get a better look at it. Yeah. So how long are they usually drying in here? Uh, they, they could stay in here for a day or a year. Um, it's it's, it it's going to remain the same moisture content in here, um, whether it's January or July. Okay. Um, we need to control that because uh, you can run into issues with, with too much or too little moisture in the wood. It's, uh, it's kind of the devil in the details there, that uh, okay. the, the moisture content of everything. But. Okay. All right. Next. All right. Now we'll go press them. Okay. So this box was built to keep heat in there. It needs to be at least 60 degrees, um, which we do heat the building, but sometimes it can get really cold and we need okay. to keep that glue 60 degrees. So when they're running this, they will apply the glue to the top and bottom of the sheet here. And they'll come through this tray and they will get thrown on this tray and everything will be laid up on this table and then we'll put this in this, uh, the, each panel already glued up in this 10 opening press. So they'll be stacked up in here and then shut for uh, about an hour or so and under pressure. And each opening will hold about six panels, the 10 openings will run about 60 panels of spectroply per hour in this press. It's a little more impressive when it's running. Yeah, that's but, okay. Uh, it's an off day. Yeah, okay. Uh, All right. What else do we have, John? Uh, we got the Dymalux press. These are running, so we can check that out. Hey, Pat. Can you open that up? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is our Dymalux product. It's, it's all right, it's all right. Yeah, sorry. Let me get out of the way. <laughs> all right. So with Dymalux, we need a lot more pressure and a lot more heat. So we're putting a ton of pressure on these panels that you can see in here. And we're measuring the heat with the thermocouple wire. And you can see that it's currently at 254 degrees in the middle of that panel. How many pounds of pressure is that? Uh, it's about 1,000 PSI. Yeah. It'll literally crush the wood to half its thickness. So we use twice the amount of veneer that we do in Dymalux compared to Spectraply. Uh, this is, yes, it's a waterproof, um, very hard, very dense laminate. Um, so it's used for anything that's going to need to stand up to elements like, uh, like the outdoor uh, um, market would need. Um, so uh, it's going to go towards handgun grips, um, knife handles, game calls, uh, but it's also in a lot of um, indoor stuff like like that will be around water too, like the toothbrushes, like kitchen cutlery. Um, we're also it's on furniture a lot. Um, pool tables is a big one. 
Um, not just pool tables, but the pool queues themselves. Uh, yeah, it's, it's got a lot of applications. Okay. All right. I'll show you the stock room. Stock room. Yeah, I don't know if you want to walk down with the camera okay. at first, but it's kind of... So you want to... So we're gearing up for Black Friday right now. Um, Is there still to... a Black Friday? Yeah. <laughs> it's a series I of days I think so. Now. Yeah, uh -huh. I know. Everybody's doing their Black Friday sales now, but it's something I kind of started a few years ago, the day after Thanksgiving, a lot of our customers will actually wait and only buy on that day. We just, it's a good way for us to, uh, as things kind of slow down for, you know, in the gun stock side of things, late fall, early winter, it's a, it's a good way for us to move some product. So um, the, you know, the day after Thanksgiving, we'll, we'll sell a thousand packages out of here. Are and, they expecting uh, a discount if you buy on Yeah, Black it's our biggest sale of the year. So that's yeah. why a lot of guys, a lot of people will, um, We'll wait and buy only this day, or or make sure that they do visit our site that day. And uh, yeah, they'll purchase anything from uh, your dark aqua, blue and black, turning blanks for various items to a white and black. So all those uh, we've got 75 off. standard colors, I believe, and like I said, we do customs all the time as well. What was that? All those sheets that we saw, they get grouped together. Yes, they, they end up in that. And then they turn that. So they all combine to this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Huh. Yeah, you can see it. Yep. And then we've got three and four layer patterns. Uh, we've got three inch blocks. These are two inch, all the way down to inch and a half. Turning blanks, which would be most useful for the smaller items like the game calls. Um, or pens, uh, yeah. you name it. There's so many things people are making with this stuff, so it's all going to get turned into something cool. Yeah. Okay, ready. okay, we're in one more building now, and actually it's reasonably quiet in here. And we're standing in front of some skateboards, so this is pretty cool. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about this, John. Yeah, we're out here, we make some finished parts and uh, one of them would be in skateboard decks uh, it's all made out of Canadian hard maple uh, you know we've got various colors as you can see um, in various shapes and sizes um, all ready to be uh, applied with a graphic and shipped to the customer I'm assuming because of the type of usage these get they would have to be made with something very durable oh yeah yeah they're they're rugged and we're actually working on some new technology to to put some different species and, um, and, and other resin or composite materials inside to make it even, even more tougher. How many pieces of wood is there actually in that? Uh, there's together? seven sheets per seven sheets. Okay. per board. That's a good question because that's in skateboarding. The weight of the board is how many plies it has. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is seven is seven a fairly standard amount? Yeah, that's fairly standard. Uh, what have you got to do to get that weight to where the rider w needs it? Um, everyone's going to vary a little bit uh, depending on the width and the length of the boards. Uh, but uh, seven, sometimes eight layers. Well, as, I, as I've said, I mean, this has been very eye-opening today with Fusino doing some things I had no idea until we were researching yeah. a little bit for the show yeah. that you did skateboards. Yeah. I would never have thought that. Yeah, plenty of them. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll be doing a lot more in 2021. Is that sport still growing? Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, I, I think the demand is very much there. Um, there's a company in the States that is producing about 50,000 decks a day and uh, they can't keep up 
and um, we are looking to uh, get into some of that market and, and uh, hopefully hopefully provide How long have you been doing want. it, by the way? Skateboards? Skateboards uh, about three years. Three years, okay. Well, neat. Uh, yeah. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. That's Brody and Randy. Yeah. Um, and then I can show you the CNC is what they're running. Okay, let's do a quick look over yeah. there. So these here, and what the operator is sanding here, are uh, they're actually going to be hookah parts. Yeah. Yes, for uh, tobacco smoking apparatus. Yeah. And plenty of different colors. Yeah. Yep, they're hookah parts for a customer in California. <laughs> Yeah, they have like hookah bars and stuff. Yep. Yeah. So, and then we've got, these are going to be uh, um, exercise clubs. Yeah. Well, no, never mind. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so they'll put weights on the end of that, and then it'll do all kinds of exercises with it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Ready. Okay. Now we're outside again, and John, I can actually hear you. Yes. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank goodness we had a good mic system for you, and hopefully our audience is able to hear you well, because it sure was a very interesting talk. Now we're, we're standing in front of this huge wood chip pile, mm -hmm. or piles. Where is this all going? Uh, this is just a dry storage for, for chips. Uh, a lot of this will be going as playground chips or ground into mulch yep. or, or even biodiesel fuel. Yep. Um, not biodiesel fuel, but bio, uh, biomass. Biomass, fuel. yeah. Um, yep. And then this is our, uh, our scrap pile from processing the gunstock blanks. Um, we sell a lot of this for, uh, as firewood okay. um, over the fall and winter. All right. uh, it's all kiln dried hardwood and can be purchased by the truckload at our uh, North Anson location. Okay, yeah, and we're located on the Valley Road in North Anson. I think I mentioned that earlier, so uh, not hard to find the place. It, it, no. it sticks out pretty well with a, a what would you say, 62 acres and a mass of buildings here. So it's a, it's a good sized facility. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, John, I really want to thank you for being our tour guide this morning um, around Who's and O's. Uh, and uh, it certainly sounds as I've learned a lot of stuff here. This is a really pretty <laughs> impressive operation, which uh, I think prior to the show, I, I would dare say that the average person around here probably had no idea yeah. all the things that you folks do. So uh, hopefully we can help in a way, letting uh, people know what you do, and who knows, maybe it will result in a little more business. Absolutely. Can't hurt. Great. Can't hurt. So anyways, I uh, want to thank everybody for joining us this morning. And uh, we're filming this a couple weeks before Thanksgiving, so wish everybody a uh, happy Thanksgiving. And now you know. <laughs>